Hello folks, my name's Jan Kent and I'm here interviewing Steve Worrell for the Lancaster Photography Society. Hello Steve. Hello Jan, how are you well? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very good indeed. Good. Steve joined Lancaster Photography Society in 2019 and has contributed to the Society's competitions, culminating in achieving the President's Challenge and the Members' Choice Awards. So Steve, how did you get into photography? I found an enlarger in a junk shop when I was about 14 years of age. It fascinated me. So I started developing uh, black and white photographs in my mum's shed. Right. Why did you join the Lancaster Photography Society? Um, I felt that um, I, there's a site called UPIC which people contribute towards and it became pay only and I would, it was free for many years but I refused to pay so uh, Alison suggested we join the camera club so that's it. Right, okay. So what was the experience of your first meeting like? Very um, eye-opening. Um, I met a guy in Chester's in the Lake District who had the same camera as me and uh, I got chatting to him and he told me about his local camera club and how they were all very aloof and uh, it was uh, you know, the, the, the good photographers that had been there for years, the old ones, they all mixed together and ignored everybody else and he felt quite put out by it. So we've been down to um, into town quite often and saw the exhibition every year. And Alison was always saying to me, let's have a go, let's have a go. And when I arrived that first day, first evening, I found that um, everybody was very warm and, and, and uh, uh, comforting on you. And, and you, made, you were made feel, to feel welcome. Um, and that really impressed me, to be honest with you. It did me as well, because I'm a relatively new member and it wasn't very long till I really felt part of the club. Yeah. And that's important because everybody knows who you are but a lot of the time you don't know who they are and yep. it was really nice that people would come up and talk to me yeah they, they, they did the people came up and said hey, you know how are you what do you do um you know and and, and made you feel like you were part of something that was uh, for all of you not just for the elite people that have been there that's right anyway let's have a look at some of your photographs the first one is a picture in a pub in 1984 and it looks like an old photograph does this mean that you were into photography that long ago and when was it taken where was it taken well i was very keen on photography um and uh developed my own photographs as i say um i used to mix around with lots of sort of uh, new wave bands and that was after a gig uh it was a pub in longridge but the rehearsals have been in, in, uh, in Longridge as well, um, which is sort of poignant really, because about a year after that, I got married and started to take work seriously. And then children, then a divorce, then the same thing again. Um, and so I had a camera, but I only ever really used it until very recently, just to take snapshots. So all that passion for photography just uh, disappeared into the background as I put my head down and worked hard. Mm. I think that's the case for an awful lot of people. Yeah. Anyway, um, the photograph that won the Members' Choice in 2020 was taken at the bottom of your street. Can you tell me how that happened? Yeah, easy. Um, every morning I give Alison a kiss as she gets into when she was working uh, from White Cross. She's working from home at the moment. Um, I give her a kiss in the car and say, bye bye and the car's pointing that way and the, there's a bit of a park down there and uh, I looked across at it and the, the mist had set up it was an autumn day and I just looked and thought wow and that's like a few feet from where you live so I whipped in got my camera went outside took the picture it's hardly modified at all the, 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 I've taken out a, a rail and a bin um, but that's just how it was at the bottom of my street. Now I live on a, a dormant bungalow estate, so you wouldn't believe it. It looks like it's been taken in the countryside. It certainly does, yes. It's a and lovely picture. You've also got a very, very nice photograph of the setting sun over Morecambe Bay, and I'm sure it's a photograph that a lot of us from the society have taken. 
What do you find that our locality has to offer photographers? Uh, I don't know of anywhere better that I can think of. You've got the Loon Valley, which is probably the most uh, picturesque and uh, um, beautiful to photograph valley that I've ever come across that way. You've got Morecambe Bay, um, which is amazing. You've got the Lake District on the other side. The sunsets across that bay are stunning. Um, and I've got hundreds of them. But one thing I found about sunsets is you have to include something in the foreground or, yes. you know, a, a shadow or a silhouette or something. Just the sun on its own going down is quite boring. But I, I like that particular one because you can see all the reflections in the, um, in the sea. Um, and of course, if you go the other way, up north, you've got the Lake District. So you couldn't be in a better position to take a photographer seriously. No, and we often have boats that yep. are there to have a little bit of interest at the front, just as a silhouette, which is great. Well, uh, right, uh, there's even a photograph in Heesham, which was on the cover of a, a Black Sabbath album, which is some um, uh, old graves dug into stone. Oh, yeah. And when you get, get water in them, mm. that was the uh, Black Sabbath's greatest hits album was taken uh, of that particular... Oh, I didn't realise that. Oh, must have a look. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yes. OK, so if we move on to the next photograph, Photograph 4 that we have here was called The Hunt for Red October and it's basically a, a white background with a red leaf in the bottom third of the photograph. So what's the relevance of the title to this photograph? Right, well the photograph, um, Alison, my partner, um, picked up some acer leaves at uh, a local uh, garden centre and I was messing around one night and we'd got this um, light box um, and I bought it for Alison for Christmas and she's never used it and I've hardly ever used it but I thought I'd go with it so I took the picture and then the uh, theme for that particular competition was movies or books so it had to be the title I of remember. a movie or books um, and I looked around in photographs and I found one that I thought I liked and then I thought what name can go to that and I thought it's very important when you're, if you're doing this because the name has to be very relevant to the, the photograph to make the photograph um, important. So I've seen a film a while ago, Hunt for Red October, with Sean Connery, and it's a really good, good film. film, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> very good it, film. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, oh, Red, Red October. So that's why I called it The Hunt for Red October. Thank you. The judge really liked it. I, I was quite pleased. I watched the, the video a few times, because he says, and this is a really stunning shot. And I, <laughs> Gets to yeah, you, doesn't, doesn't it? it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we've got a photograph of a virgin hot air balloon on the ground. Was it a planned photo shoot and is it taken locally? Uh, it's taken on the way back from Long, uh, Kirby Longsdale. We'd been up at Kirby Longsdale to this cafe they were going to. We went there and ran our way back and it was about seven o'clock at night and the balloon was on the floor when we, when we came past it. And I thought, oh, well, let's stop off and have a look at this. So we stopped off and had a look at it. <laughs> And we took, me and my partner, Alison, took various photographs of it. And uh, I took that one just before it actually lifted. Um, and the setting around there, the, the colours on the, the, the fields, and, and it was absolutely mm. gorgeous. And it is a bit contentious, though, because um, I got very bored. And um, Alison wanted to catch a photograph of it actually lifting off. And they were messing about, messing about. Mm. I said, oh, look, let's go home. And just as we set off, it lifted off. <laughs> That's always the way, isn't it? Yeah, I got yes. shouted at. But it's a lovely photograph. We've got now a photograph which shows Rydal Water. So is this one of the, your favourite destinations or what is your favourite destination for taking photo photos? I think my favourite destination is probably the Loon Valley. But the, I've got, been going to the Lake District most of my life. I, when I was a, a young lad, I used to camp there and I've had a couple of caravans and gone up there with the kids. Um, I love it to pieces. That particular shot, um, you've got to park quite a bit. F uh, there's no way actually to park on the side of Rydal Water. So you've got to park quite a bit and walk back. Um, and there's all, as you you see Rydal Water first presenting itself, there's loads and loads of different images. You look over the fells. That particular one I like because I like the house. Mm -hmm. um, but it's actually been on television. There's a, a, a Northwest News thing um, where they're showing various places in the Northwest and they actually zoom in on that particular shot. Right. Um, which, oh, I'll mm. take the board for that. Mm. But it's th I've taken a few of it, but it's very calm, which is why I like it. Yes, there's a very nice reflection in that. Yes. So if we go back to the Members' Choice winner again at the bottom of your street, 
Is there anything else you want to say about this photograph? You know? I, I think the most important thing that I learned from that is that you don't have to go on a safari to take good photographs. Mm. They're all around. Yes. You know, I mean, you walk down the road, you go travel a couple of miles in the car, and that's as much as you need to do to get good photography. And I think we'll have discovered that from people when we get back to normal. Yes. And we'll find that so many people have taken photographs during lockdown, very, very locally. I think quite a lot of good's going to come out of this lockdown. People seem to have, um, uh, their attitudes towards each other seem to have lightheartened. You know, everybody Definitely. seems to be kinder and, and more... Uh, uh, generous to each other. Yes, and we certainly got to know people in the neighbourhood a lot better. Yeah. Certainly with me. So, in summary, what can you say that you really enjoyed about your first year with Lancaster Photography Society? Well, I, I mean this quite sincerely. Um, I feel very welcomed. I feel as though I'm quite inspired. I feel uplifted. Um, it's made my year so much more special than it would normally be i've enjoyed every single session there's always something to learn and that's the most important thing you're always learning every time you go to a, a competition or to watch somebody give a talk or a, a club night you learn something every single time yes. and i i've gone back and uh, altered my photographs after listening to a judge give their opinion on things mm. and it's been such a better photograph yes i've done that as well have you any advice for any new members who are thinking of joining join <laughs> that's if, very good yeah if you if you're interested in photography and you have a passion for it there's about 40 50 people there who are all feel exactly the same and uh, all want you inspired and to do better and when you do better and you do well they don't have to give you some praise for it but they also need to remember that there are some of us who are very new at it yes I'm... and so there's lots of different levels and that's the important thing yes that they can fit in uh, anywhere. I'm new as well. Yeah. Mm. Right, well, thank you very much, Steve. It's been great fun talking to yeah, you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. And you. Thank you.